Welcome back. The dawn of the internet, of course, was also the dawn of internet scams. And over time, they have gotten more and more sophisticated. Detective Matthew Hogan of the Connecticut State Police knows this better than most. His specialty is financial crimes. He's here in studio to share some red flags so you don't fall prey. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I think one of the, the big common threads as, as we were preparing for this is crypto. I'm such a rube, I wouldn't even know where to get crypto or how to do it. I don't mm -hmm. know anything about it. I just like, you know, good old money. But crypto seems to be a big scam, and it's the untraceability. Is that part of the factor? So that's a misnomer. It actually is traceable. It's actually more traceable than traditional money is because the way the blockchain works, it's open source. So I can go on to the blockchain and actually trace every transaction that occurs. Um, so it's very, very easy for us to do if you have the proper tools, training, and sure. experience. So why crypto? Why are these uh, criminals, these scam artists focused on that, and how does it all work? So it's pseudonymous. So basically, it is difficult to figure out who actually owns the wallet that contains the crypto. Um, it's, it moves very quickly. You can commingle assets very easily as well, depending on what kind you're using. So it's a favorite method because of those. And they also recognize law enforcement typically doesn't have the experience or uh, capability to do this at mass scale. So for any one victim, there's you know five or six others potentially. And it's always, I mean, whether it's these new crypto and online scams or the old ones, the scam artist only has to be right once. Right. They can spend all day trying, and if they just hit on one poor victim, right. they've had a good day's work. Meanwhile, we're, we're all targets over and over and over again. It's just like a phishing email, right? They'll, they'll send out a million phishing emails, and you just need one person to click on it, and it's the same exact result. All right, kind of similar to that, one of the big ones you see are these pop-up scams. Tell us about that. So pop-up window scams, or everybody sees like a, uh, you're on your laptop doing whatever you're doing, and you get a, a Windows Defender pops up, or you get some kind of alert saying that you've had a, a virus infected on your device, and it gives you a prompt uh, to call the Microsoft or whoever it may be to contact them to try and get the virus removed from your, your device. And once you do that, you're contacting a scammer, and it's a call center. Typically, those are based out of the, uh, India, West Africa. And when they uh, do that, they'll direct you to usually a cryptocurrency kiosk, a Bitcoin ATM machine. Um, those ones uh, are you'll have to go to your typical bank, withdraw cash, and they'll, fo they'll follow you on the phone telling you the entire way um, where to go, which ATM to use, which kiosk to use. And from there, they'll tell you which wallet to send to. So they'll text you a QR code, which is the wallet address, that, like an account number. And that money goes right to the scammer. And what are they doing? What are they telling you to get you to give them the money that your computer is locked and you can't get it back, that they can help you, but they need prepayment? What right. are the common things you hear? So the, the, these are based on a, uh, really a, a scare tactic. These are immediate transactions. They want to occur right then and there. So what they'll tell them a lot of times are, your device has a virus on it. Um, we've found that there may be child pornography on your device, or it looks like your um, your money in your account has moved. And what they'll do is they're actually going into your emails, getting passwords during that period, log on to your account. Sometimes they'll actually go to the uh, point where they're actually moving money from your checking to your savings to look like you have no money in your account. So you now see there's no money, or you believe that there may be child pornography. Everybody's scared of that. So they'll go, okay, well, let's, let's be safe about this. You may need to pay a fine or pay a bail amount or pay something in crypto go to the nearest ATM machine, withdraw this cash, and now go to a kiosk. Tell another big one is pig butchering, you called it? Yep. What's that mean? So pig butchering is probably one of the most devastating ones we've seen thus far. It's the highest level dollar loss from any of the victims we've deal with. Typically the ATM pop-up window scam type of things are thousands of dollars to tens of thousands. These are six figure plus losses. Uh, people are contacted by a text message, usually an SMS or Facebook uh, message saying, hey, this is John, and you're not John. So you're like, hey, wrong number. So the wrong number text creates a, an opportunity for them to respond to you, and they build rapport using social engineering tactics. And over a period of several weeks to months, they'll uh, communicate with you, building that rapport further and further. They move you to uh, WhatsApp, which is a meta text uh, app, which is end, end encrypted. It makes it very difficult for us to do our job. And from that point, that rapport building process goes further and further, where they'll tell you, hey, um, I have an uncle who works for Goldman Sachs or JP, and he has this inside information on some really great ideas on investing. You want to jump in with me? That's where they bring up the idea of cryptocurrency. They have, and the, what the problem with these are is it's a very large scale criminal enterprise operated in Southeast Asia, and there's hundreds of these all over uh, Laos, Cambodia, that general area. And they have uh, people who are doing the building websites. They have hundreds of websites that are, look very similar, they're all using the same domains. And the websites function just like an actual uh, uh, investment page would. It looks like an investment page. You'll see fluctuations in the market. And they believe once you start investing money into this platform, you'll see returns. So you're like, oh, I actually see some investments happening here. I'm getting some money back. They actually give you the opportunity to withdraw some of that cash to further build that trust in the platform. 
So once you fill that trust, that's when people start to really dump everything they have into these uh, scam profiles. And at that point, from the minute you give that money over to them, they're moving it instantaneously. It's, and it's gone. It's gone. It goes to typically to there's a handful of uh, crypto exchanges that they go to. Some of them are compliant with the United States. Some of them are not. And those are obviously very difficult for us to get back. We have less than two minutes left. and We've covered a lot of stuff already. But can you give people some idea what those red flags should be? I mean, the pop up, the, the text message, the Facebook message. How should people be responding? So first things first for pig butchering scams. You just don't respond to text messages you aren't expecting. Just like if you get some email you're not expecting, don't respond to it. Um, block it and remove it. Don't respond. Um, if you do, by chance, fall for it, make sure you contact local law enforcement, especially us at the state police. We have the capability to at least get on top of it as fast as possible, but speed is of the essence for all of these because crypto moves so quickly. So even if it's a pop-up window scam and you do wind up sending money, you need to get in touch with law enforcement immediately. Uh, pop-up windows in general, they're not going to require any kind of money services, neither are government agencies. We won't ask you to pay for crypto or take cash out, anything like that. So if someone's demanding money or there's a, uh, a feeling of immediacy to it, it's a red flag. Uh, they won't, we won't ask you to go to ATM machines, uh, ATM, or moving from bank to bank. It's not something we do, and neither is the institution going to do that or Microsoft. Is there, I mean, you must, we all see it, right? I mean, Matt Hogan must have a cell phone and be getting these things. I mean, do, do scammers not know who they're messing with and t reach out to you? They do. I, I've, I've talked to a couple of them for months at a time sometimes to kind of understand what they do. They don't care. I've sent them pictures of my badge going, <laughs> hey, sorry, you're wrong person, and they don't care. They'll continue with the scam because the, the problem with this is they're human trafficking victims. So if they aren't getting money from a victim, they're probably getting beaten, sexually assaulted, killed. So there's a real risk of that as well. And just terrible on all sides. And awful. Can you, we only have 20 seconds left, but is there hope? I mean, can people beat this stuff? By doing things like this is big, but we need partnership from everyone, including telecom, social media, uh, local, state, federal law enforcement agencies. Everyone needs to get in the same room on the same page and try and fight this. And probably the old adage, if it sounds too good to be true. 100%. High risk, or a low risk, high reward, red flag. And a lot of people, when they come and talk to you about it, do they say, I should have known? Everyone says that, and the worst part is they shouldn't feel that way. Because th these guys are pros. Right. All right. Matthew Hogan from the State Police, we appreciate you being uh, you. with us, and uh, hopefully we'll have you back because there's a lot more to talk about. Thank you.